ShireSociety.com. Since we have, uh, you know, I guess the first ever situation where the entire world is on fiat currency, this fiat currency collapse would probably me- remake the world. It's not likely to take down even half the governments fully, but some kind of change in the future might. Probably in the future, people will have a name for the period we're living in right now. Uh, I mean, they'll, you know, they'll have a name for this decade from the, you know, the decade or two from the year 2000 to the year 2015. They may call it the terror era or the surveillance era or something like that. Just as we now contemptuously refer to the McCarthy era and the Red Scare. Eventually segments of humanity will cast off or severely limit the governments that are over them. And people will start looking back at this roughly 5,000 year period, they'll probably think of it as the the period of state, or the state era. Before we get to that point, that looking backward point, there may be massive growth in governments. In fact, that may even be necessary to get to that point. For the balloon to fall, it sometimes has to burst. But the way I look at it, any good science fiction story set any, any distance into the future more than a hundred years should probably incorporate all of these concepts I don't know of hardly any I know of hardly any that do Uh, the novel Schismatrix comes the closest I don't remember who wrote it I believe it's set around the year 2300 and it does recognize the fact that many humans will be unrecognizable as such by that time with bioengineering and mechanical engineering. But even that novel from the 80s, I think, misses a few of the technological breakthroughs that have already happened. The obvious technological change that he does notice, and which a lot of people, I think, miss, is that the desire for freedom will drive people to create their own small countries in space. In his scenario, most of these countries end up not being very free at all. And uh, normal humanity, the kind we think of today, is preserved on Earth through enforcement technology. Well, here's another assumption I'm making, though, and that is that people actually manage to get off the planet before something drives them extinct. Or maybe I should say independent of planet as opposed to off planet. It's possible, obviously, that the authorities will hold us down so long that a comet gets to the Earth before Earthers get to the comets, or some other disaster stops the advance of technology. In that case, I guess all my bets are off because I'm assuming that people can build much of what they want. The truth is they can only do that if technology continues to advance. I'm also assuming humans are not being heavily managed by a god or alien race. I guess I shouldn't assume either of those things either. And there's that ever-present question of whether we're actually living in a simulation. It seems to me that if I'm, unless I'm missing something, one of the space things that will happen is people will end up trying to live on Mars and it will go pretty badly. I'm not so much saying a lot of people will die as I am saying Mars will be outperformed by lunar or asteroid colonies, later by orbital O'Neill colonies, probably later. I do think people will go there and live there just because there is this unwise fixation on some other womb that is just like the womb we currently live in. That's what will drive people there. But gravity, unpredictable weather, and inappropriate distance from Earth will probably keep them from prospering. I don't think people will colonize the stars until long after they're uh, no longer recognizably human. There's just too much wealth to be gotten right at hand inside the solar system and living conditions would be no better on a perfectly earth-like world than they would be on a world that you create inside the solar system.
What are you arresting this man for? You've seen the dramatic Liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keene's advantages are compelling, and the list of reasons to move has just been updated. For details, visit freekeen.com. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. He didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at shiresociety.com.